Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and this is the story of what happened to Summersville. We'll start this with an examination of the sites surrounding Summersville in the Fallout universe and in the real world. We'll then move into the layout of the town in the Fallout universe, the history of the town in the Fallout universe, and close with the history of Summersville in the real world. That being said, let's get started. Above Summersville to the west, one can find Camp McClintock, a U.S. Army training facility that remains operational 26 years after nuclear Armageddon due to its robotic staff. North-northwest of Summersville, the old park ranger tower known as the East Kanawha Overlook gives sweeping views of its own part of the forest region. North of Summersville, along the river, lies the defunct Tigert Water Treatment Plant. Just south of that plant, Poseidon Power Substation PX02 waits for power to flow from the Poseidon Energy Power Plant in Charleston. The Overlook, Treatment Plant, and Substation have all been mentioned in previous lore videos, as they also lie in close proximity to both Sudden and Helvetia in the Fallout universe. A hole in the cliff face to the southeast of Summersville marks one of the entrances to the mysterious deep. Not too far to the southwest from that cavern entrance, the Blood Eagle Raiders watch over the region from an outpost known as the Pigsty. With those locations aside, we come to the defining site of this part of the forest, Summersville Lake. Summersville Lake, an artificial lake and once the largest lake in West Virginia, has been completely drained thanks to the destruction of the Summersville Dam by Raider boss David Thorpe. Before the war, Summersville Lake served as the reason for the placement of other nearby locations, namely the mansions of the wealthy Appalachians that overlooked the lake from its southern and southeastern shore, and the Summersville docks and lakeside cabins that rest on the western bank. In the heart of the dry lake bed lies the super mutant controlled outpost of New Gad built on the ruins of Gad, a town submerged when the lake was filled. With the dam destroyed, the once muddy lake bottom has been dried and bleached white by the sun. The river that once filled the lake now twists through a dusty field, winding its way past old boats through New Gad and out the ruins of the Summersville Dam. While in-game Summersville lies on the shore of Summersville Lake, real-life Summersville lies within a mile of the lake but is separated from its shoreline by forest. Let's compare the locations of real-world sites that can be found in the game with their locations in the game. The Summersville Lake Lighthouse, the only lighthouse in West Virginia, can be found approximately four miles south of Summersville. This lighthouse serves as the inspiration for the Landview Lighthouse that can be found north-northwest of Summersville in-game. Sutton, found northwest of Summersville in-game, is approximately 27 miles north of Summersville in the real world. Flatwoods, west-northwest of Summersville in-game, is found approximately 32 miles north-northeast of Summersville in the real world. Helvetia, directly north of Summersville in game, lies 45 miles northeast of Summersville in the real world. Charleston, lying at the southwest end of Summersville Lake in game, can be found approximately 43 miles west northwest of Summersville in the real world. There are four other municipalities that, though distant in game, are found as close or closer to Summersville than Helvetia or Charleston in the real world. Beckley, southwest of Summersville in game, lies 40 miles southwest of Summersville in the real world. Lewisburg, south of Summersville in game, is found approximately 40 miles southeast of Summersville in the real world. Huntersville, southeast of Summersville in game, is found approximately 45 miles east southeast of Summersville in the real world. Lastly, Watoga, east southeast of Summersville in game, lies approximately 39 miles east southeast of Summersville in the real world. With the sites around Summersville covered, let's consider the layout of Summersville itself. In game, Summersville lies on a river that flows through it from the north to the south into Summersville Lake at the town's southern edge. In my video on Helvetia, I reason that this is the Buchanan Tigert Valley River, but as the real world Gali River is the closest analog for this location, I'll add that to this river's combination name. I say this as the Gali River is the primary source of Summersville Lake in the real world, and this river is the primary source of Summersville Lake in game. If it's not yet been made clear to you, the map of Appalachia is seriously jumbled in the Fallout universe. To make things even more confusing, this river flows through Charleston. The river flowing through Charleston in the real world is the Kanawha River, a river formed at the junction of the Gauley and New Rivers. River confusion aside, let's consider the streets of Summersville. In game, Summersville is at a nexus of highways. There are two primary north to south routes through town, Highway 89 to the west, and Highway 87A to the east, which is also known as Broad Street. The town also has two east to west routes that, along with these north-south routes, practically box the town in. The northern of the east to west routes is Highway 91, while the southern is Highway 87. Along with this, there is one other east to west street in the middle of town, Main Street. Main Street and Broad Street can be found in real world Summersville. Following the same general direction, although the real world Main Street connects to regional highways on both ends, and real world Broad Street tees into US Highway 19 at its southern end. 
This is the same US-19 mentioned in other lore videos, as it passes through many of the real-world towns with counterparts that can be found in-game. Aside from street names, in-game and real-world Summersville have very little in common. Streets detailed, let's move on to the composition of the town in-game. Summersville is composed of 11 houses, apartments, a bookstore, a clothing store, a curio shop, a dry cleaner, a pharmacy, a robotics dealer, a gun shop, a laundromat, three restaurants including a delicatessen, and a soda fountain. The town also has a church with attached graveyard, a bank, and a bus stop. There are also three polling sites and an election office in town. Before the Wastelanders patch, the robotics dealer was a jewelry store and an ice cream parlor. With the composition of the town noted, let's look at the history of Summersville in the Fallout universe. Before the bombs, Summersville was one of the middle Appalachian towns that was fairly isolated from the riots that plagued the north and the south. The exact cause for the peace of this region is not clear, but I'll speculate that it's in part due to its economy, which appears to have been based in service rather than industry. While service jobs in larger cities like Morgantown were routinely lost to robots, the smaller towns of central Appalachia didn't have the customer base large enough to warrant replacing their human workers with robots. A robotic worker is cheaper to operate than a human worker is to employ over the long term, but the robot has an upfront cost that might be too high to justify in a town with the business available from a population in the dozens to low hundreds. Regardless of why though, the region around Somersville Lake was a peaceful one. While the top 1% of Appalachia lived to the south in Bromwell, Burdett Manor, Riverside Manor, Sugar Maple, the Torrance House, and the Hornwright Summer Villa housed some of Appalachia's wealthiest citizens. Riverside Manor was the home of the Rivers family, headed by matriarch Shannon Rivers, the beloved voice actress of the Mistress of Mystery. Mrs. Rivers' husband, Frederick Rivers, was a brilliant man and an inventor who devoted his time to building incredible things for his wife, including a fully functional lair for the Mistress of Mystery in the basement. The couple's only child, Olivia Rivers, grew up with the relative absence of her mother, thanks to her famous parents' production schedule, but she was always looking forward to the yearly family camping trip as a chance to reconnect. Burdett Manor to the northeast was home to crotchety old Nate, a wheelchair-bound wealthy old man living alone after having driven everyone off with his meanness. Next door to Riverside to the east, the Torrance House appears to have been the site of an event of shining terror. Behind the large manor house, a hedge maze serves as the final resting place for a potential axe murderer. Across the highway from the Torrance House, Sugar Maple served an unnamed wealthy family, their limousines still parked in the driveway telling us that they were likely home when the end came. The last manor house served as the summer home to the wealthy Hornwright family. Whether Penelope Hornwright or her father Daniel ever spent time in this home is unknown, but a woman known as Mrs. Amalthea seems to have lived there for a time. Frustrated with children playing at her estate, she tasked her staff with attempting to kill the intruders with rat poison laced sugar bombs. North of the Hornwright Summer Villa, the Overlook Cabin served guests that wished to stay in the scenic area. Across the lake to the west, the Summersville docks served as the launching point for many ships that now lay on the dry lake bed in 2103. As a side note, some of these ships are very large, strangely large for a small recreational lake without any industrial operations on its shorelines. Anyway though, north along the shore from the docks, the lakeside cabins served tourists wanting to take in the natural grandeur of an artificial lake. In the heavily book-laden house on the north side of Summersville itself, Aaliyah, a VTU doctoral candidate, worked on the Mark 7 upgrade to the Pip-Boy 2000 Mark 6. In their shop on Broad Street, the Duncan brothers, Jonathan and James, operated their robotics business, ordering chassis from General Atomics and Robco for their clients that ranged from the wealthy Garahan family to the United States Army's Camp McClintock. When Jonathan Duncan passed on, James lost his mind. He altered the brother's Mr. Handy sales clerk, Skinner, so that he could supposedly see the deceased Jonathan, and he hired an agency to find his brother, believing in his delusional state that Jonathan was hiding from him. In the closing days before the bombs, Summersville, along with the rest of Appalachia, was preparing for the upcoming November 2nd, 2077 election. On the ballot, the replacement of the disgraced Senator Sam Blackwell in Ballot Measure 6, the Appalachian Prosperity Act. The town seems to have been wholly prepared for this election over a week before time, with servicemen in town to secure the polls. On the morning of October 23rd, 2077, a motorcycle club was riding up Highway 89 when the bombs came down. The event caused a few of the bikes to be wrecked, while the remainder dismounted. A truck careened into the front of the church. At Burdett Manor, old Nate sat on his patio and watched the world end. Unapologetic for his foul temperament, happy that he was hooked up to an IV drip of painkillers. 
In Riverside Manor, the Rivers family descended into the basement and prepared to ride out the nuclear winter of 2077 to 2078. Riverside Manor would become the home of the Mistresses of Mystery over the next eight years, but that's a story that deserves its own video. At the Tigert Water Treatment Plant, a group of raiders known as the Reavers set up an outpost, including a slave fighting pit. A quick side note here, I don't know with 100% accuracy that this is where the Reavers settled, but I do know that the Reavers moved south through Helvetia towards Summersville, and that a raider camp with slave fighting pit existed at the Tigert Water Treatment Plant. That being said, the region around Summersville was relatively peaceful over the next few years, thanks in large part to the efforts of the Mistress of Mystery, Shannon Rivers. This peace was shattered in the early morning hours of Christmas Day 2082, when David Thorpe blew up the Summersville Dam, draining Summersville Lake and flooding the responders' headquarters in Charleston. As the lake receded, it revealed the remains of Gad, a town lost to the waters of Summersville Lake when the dam was constructed and the reservoir filled in the 1960s. Now revealed, Gad attracted scavengers that flocked to the ruins of the town, looting it and the ships that scattered the lake bed, founding the community of New Gad on its ruins. Summersville was the scene of betrayal in July of 2086. Olivia Rivers, long disillusioned with her mother's cause, had been broken by the death of a fellow mistress of mystery in February of that year. Power hungry, she sought control of the Raiders of the Savage Divide to bring order to the region. In the process of trying to find her way into their organization, she spotted her old neighbor Brody Torrance among the Raiders guarding the North Cutthroat Checkpoint. She killed all the other Raiders and only wounded him before she offered her services. As a sign of goodwill, she leaked the specifics of an upcoming supply run into Somerville to the Raiders. Ambushed by Brody Torrance and a pair of other Raiders, Mistress Allison Long managed to kill his henchmen before she was killed by Olivia herself, who couldn't afford to let the ambush fail. Olivia lamented Allison's death, but she was committed to her cause. We'll discuss the rest of that story another time. It was around the time of that stab in the back that word came from over the mountains that the Appalachian Brotherhood of Steel was fighting a battle against monstrous beasts that converted those they attacked to their side. The Scorched Plague, the cause of these conversions, began to spread out of the Cranberry Bog. Amy Carey, a former VTU student, was working on technology to monitor the environmental effects of the Scorched Plague while living at the Target Water Treatment Plant just north of Summersville. Amy's boyfriend since before the war, Responders Quartermaster Jeff Nakamura, attempted to get her on board with the Responders, but she was unwilling. When Jeff attempted to propose to her after years of dating, she turned him down, stating that their work was too important to focus on anything else. On April 16th, 2095, fearing that the Brotherhood of Steel was going to seize her research for their uses and their uses alone, she fled west to the Cowspots Creamery, where she planned to meet Jeff. Unfortunately, she was killed there, and her body still lies on the floor of the Creamery. By spring of 2097, the Scorched Beasts and their infected slaves had wiped the human population from Appalachia. While the super mutants of Huntersville had been kept in check by the responders and the Appalachian Brotherhood of Steel, in their absence, these Scorched Plague immune mutants took both the town of Summersville and New Gad as their own. In 2102, the residents of Vault 76 emerged and quickly finished the Scorched Plague inoculation the responders had been working on and killed the Scorched Beast Queen, making Appalachia much safer for settlement. In 2103, alongside the Raiders of the Crater, the Settlers of Foundation, and many others, the Blood Eagle Raiders arrived in Appalachia and seized Summersville from the Super Mutants. Today, the Blood Eagles hold the town, making their homes on the rooftops and in abandoned houses of the town's pre-war residents. They've also seized Burdett Manor and turned it into the kill box. There are a couple of other things to cover here before we move on to the real world history. First, there's a note that can be found in New Gad that challenges much of the established lore on Summersville Lake and Fallout 76. The note makes it appear that the ruins of Gad were exposed to be scavenged pre-war. It does not seem possible, given what we know about the Christmas flood of 2082, although I suppose it could be possible that the lake was drained for a time before the bombs and subsequently refilled in the aftermath, but this is the only note that would lead to any sort of conclusion like that. Second, on the ground near the western polling station, one can find flyers with boilerplate language of the automated voter system endorsing a candidate for president. Whether this is a result of the faux election of President Eckhart of the Enclave, or something related to the as of yet unreleased race for the presidency quest, is not known to me. I think that's enough on the history of Summersville in the Fallout universe. Let's move on to the history of Summersville in the real world. The human history of the region dates back thousands of years. I've covered the general native history of West Virginia in other videos, so let's just say that the first non-natives to arrive in the area, that I could find at least, were Major William Morris and his slave Peter Morris in 1775. Major Morris claimed the land and gave it to his son William Jr., who, in turn, sold it to his brother Henry, who migrated to the area, 
building a cabin along Peters Creek, named for his father's slave, in 1791. In 1818, Nicholas County, the county of which Summersville is the seat, was formed and made from parts of Kanawha, Greenbrier, and Randolph counties. The county is named for Wilson Carey Nicholas, a Virginian governor and U.S. senator. The town of Summersville itself was laid out in 1824 and named for Lewis Summers, the judge who had introduced the bill to the Virginia General Assembly to form the county. The region was known for its forests and grazing land. The Western and Gully Bridge Turnpike was built through Nicholas County in 1859. Much of the route of that turnpike was paved in the 1920s and would serve as part of US-19. The Civil War was harder on Summersville than any town I've covered in this series so far. By the summer of 1861, the Union controlled Western Virginia, a situation the Confederacy sought to reverse. Confederate Brigadier General John B. Floyd led a force of about 2,000 men into the Gully River Canyon, entrenching on a spot overlooking Carnifex Ferry. The Union General, Rosecrans, determined to keep the Confederate forces out of the Kanawha River Valley, led 7,000 men south from Summersville to meet them. They met at what became known as the Battle of Carnifex Ferry on September 10, 1861. Though Rosecrans' forces outnumbered the Confederates more than 3 to 1, he did not launch an overwhelming assault, instead sending small groups that were pushed back by Floyd's men repeatedly. As night fell, Floyd, not wanting to risk facing the totality of Rosecrans' force, the artillery especially, retreated, evacuating before Rosecrans knew they were even leaving. Though the Union sustained higher casualties than the Confederacy, they had repulsed Floyd's force, maintaining control over the Kanawha River Valley. This maintained the secure position of the restored government of Virginia in Wheeling, keeping the path to the separation of West Virginia clear. The events of that fall, specifically October 16, 1861, would lead to a Confederate assault on Summersville the following summer. At the heart of this story is a woman by the name of Nancy Hart Douglas. Born Nancy Hart in Raleigh, North Carolina in 1846, Hart Douglas migrated with her family to the wilderness of Roan County, Virginia in 1853. She lived there with her sister and brother-in-law, the Prices. When the war came, William Price didn't join either cause, but his sympathies were with the Confederacy, and he helped them when he could. On October 16, 1861, Union soldiers arrested him, telling the family that he would be taken for questioning in Spencer, Virginia. He was found three days later, shot in the back. This act of murder fueled the 15-year-old Nancy's hatred for the Union, leading her to enlist in the Moxon Rangers, a group of pro-Confederacy guerrilla fighters. While she was an avid shooter, she also used her sex as a way to slip into the Union camps, posing as a farm girl selling eggs and vegetables. She gathered intel on these trips, reporting the strength of the Federal outpost to General Stonewall Jackson. When Perry Conley, the leader of the Moxons, was killed, Nancy Hart married fellow partisan Joshua Douglas and enlisted in the 19th Virginia Cavalry. By the summer of 1862, the farm girl ruse had run its course, and a reward was offered for her capture. She was recognized and captured by men under the orders of Lieutenant Colonel Starr and brought to Summersville. While in custody, she lured a guard to her cell, stole his pistol, and shot him, allowing her to escape. She fled back to Confederate lines. A week later, she led the Confederate cavalry back, entering the town at four in the morning. They captured the garrison, set fire to some buildings, and stole the pack and cavalry animals. She even managed to capture her captor, Lieutenant Colonel Starr. She and Joshua Douglas appear to have had enough of the excitement of the war after this, and they settled down in Greenbrier County, where they lived out their days in peace, Joshua passing in 1907 and Nancy in 1913. The Union and Confederacy maintained camps in the area for much of the rest of the war. Over the winter of 1864 to 1865, the town was burned to the ground. It took a long time for the town to rebuild, only reaching 100 citizens again in 1884. Agriculture continued to be the backbone of the local economy at this time. After the turn of the 20th century, the railroad reached Summersville, and like many of West Virginia's municipalities, the downtown was built during the early decades of the 20th century. The lumber industry boomed, driving wood and paper manufacturing. A mile or two south of Summersville, on US-19 lies the Hawks Nest Workers Memorial Gravesite. This memorial is dedicated to the Hawks Nest Tunnel Disaster. In 1930, construction began on a water diversion tunnel through Golly Mountain, southwest of Summersville. Hundreds of men, unemployed by the Great Depression, signed up, of whom two-thirds were black. These men cut a 32 to 36 foot wide tunnel through three miles of rock with a high silica content. The tunnel was filled with clouds of dust. The workers would emerge from the tunnel covered in it. There was little in the way of ventilation or the use of masks. Of the 2,900 men that worked in the tunnel, there were 764 deaths to silicosis, an incurable condition in which the lungs are filled with silica dust. Sadly, the time in which this disaster took place meant that there were also no local graveyards open to black burials. 
Thus, a funeral home in Somersville found a field to serve as their burial plot. Pushing the horror and sadness of this out of my mind, the 1930s also brought the exploitation of the local coal beds, with coal mining becoming a major industry until the 1970s and 80s. The Somersville Dam was constructed from 1960 to 1966, being dedicated by President Johnson on September 3rd, 1966. Unlike the reinforced concrete Somersville Dam of the Fallout Universe, the real Somersville Dam is a Rockville Dam, 390 feet tall, four-tenths of a mile wide. When Somersville Lake was filled, the town of Gad was swamped, but from what I've read, it's still intact on the bottom of the lake, a small town trapped in time. A hydroelectric plant was installed on the dam in 2001 that provides 200 million kilowatt hours every year. As for its population, Somersville managed to grow even through the Great Depression, only sliding in the 1980s, and recently, as it seems to have fallen from a peak in 2010 of 3,572, down to 3,274 for 2019. Getting back to the Lake Somersville Lighthouse mentioned early in this video, the 104 foot tall lighthouse is a half inch walled steel tube, 12 feet in diameter at the base, 8 feet in diameter at the top, with an interior staircase. Just as the Landview Lighthouse was built via cooperation with an educational institution, the real lighthouse was built via cooperation with the Fayette Institute of Technology. The lighthouse was assembled October 17, 2012. In more contemporary history, flooding on June 23, 2016 led to the destruction of the middle school, leading to its temporary relocation and the construction of a new school. As for current day Somersville, unfortunately, the pandemic has led to the canceling of the Nicholas County Potato Festival in both 2020 and 2021. The last was held in 2019, the 50th annual, I believe. This event is usually host to a 5K walk run, potato judging and auction, a car show, arts and crafts, music, a parade, and food concessions. The region is also host to whitewater rafting, as the Gully River National Recreational Area contains 25 miles of protection from the Gully River and is home to many Class 5 rapids. Rapids that are great for expert rafters, for those of you who wanted to know. Anyway, I think that'll do it for Somersville. If you want notifications when I launch these lore videos, you can follow me at Gaming with Maps on Twitter. If you appreciate what I do here and desire to assist me financially, you can sign up to be a patron on Patreon. There are links to both my Twitter and Patreon on the About page for this channel and in the description for this video. This has been the Irresolute Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.